everybody. Welcome to Living the Life. We're glad to have you with us today. We've got a fascinating subject mm -hmm. to talk about. You know, with so many marriages <laughs> under attack today, how do you keep from becoming a statistic? Well, our own Dr. Linda is back to help us do some troubleshooting, and we welcome you. Thanks. It's Always good, to, good to have you here. Yeah. We did a little internet poll to see how some of our viewers rate their own marriages. So let us share the results of that okay. with you and tell us what you think about this. We asked the question, are you happily married? And 34% of you said yes, incredibly. Wow. 49% said yes most of the time. 15% said mm, not really. And 2% <laughs> said, do you know a good divorce lawyer? <laughs> now, did you That's good. That's yeah. really high, Is actually. High? We have a good viewing audience. Yes. Apparently, we're happy. It's because they're watching us. They're learning they're from us, I guess. Is what it is. They're reading I the books, right? Think that, that, would, that would be accurate for society. It's not. Unfortunately, it's not. And depending on which statistics you look at, we were talking about this beforehand. Some of them put divorce as high as 49%, but mm -hmm. a, a other group of statistics is about a third. So you're well, looking let's at... let's talk about that because we have that too, the Barna Group divorce stats. This is right. the latest study. Um, this is interesting. Born-again Christians are just as likely to divorce as non-born-again, but it was less than I thought. It was 33% right. for each group. Right. But the, the, the disturbing part of that is that the Christian population isn't doing a whole lot better than mm -hmm. the un-Christian population. Mm -hmm. And yes, there should be, exactly. we would hope there would be some difference based on the transformation of what the Christian life is supposed mm -hmm. to do and how it would carry through in your relationships. But it's not. Well, there's some reasons why it's not, and that's part of what I'm, I'm covering in the book, I mm -hmm. Married You, Not Your Family. Let's yeah. talk about that. And nine other relationship myths that could ruin your marriage. <laughs> yeah. Tell me what the book's about in that. I, I'm really in looking nuggets. at, there's like 10 things in that book, looking at 10 reasons uh, why people either divorce or a way to prevent divorce. So there's a truth and a, and a lie. And a lot of times the lie is like the one we talked about, I married you, not your family. We go into marriage thinking, oh, you know, I'm just so in love with this mm -hmm. guy. And mm -hmm. yeah, his dad has a temper problem. And yeah, his mother, his mother never speaks. Me. Yeah, he <laughs> never speaks to me. And he doesn't talk to his sister. Sisters, but I love him, so I'm going to end up, yeah. this will be yeah. wonderful. And of course, when you get into that marriage, you find out that that person, you know, it's that saying, what's the saying, the acorn doesn't fall oh, far from the, the tree? tree. Mm -hmm. They're both nuts, you know, so you, you kind of have to look into that. So you don't fix it? You can't fix it? Well, can't, we can't fix it well, anyway. Well, you can you try, can, and yeah. that's one of the myths, I can change mm -hmm. my spot but partner. But you can't get away yeah. from it. You can't get away from and it. You can't so change him. You, you really can't change another person. I mean, that's and one of the myths. And we're sort of in a couple different myths here right now. Yes, yes. Right? right? I mean, right. You, when you marry into a family, right. you marry the family. Well, the die you is do. cast at You that don't point, think about right? it. And I love the cover on the book because it shows all the feet. Your it's covers like, are always great. <laughs> it's, yes. it's not just the couple there. There's other people in the bed. And, yeah. and it's just a symbolic idea. But literally, you're married. what you're marrying is the family patterns. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. think about it. We all grow up in a family. When we grow up in that family, we learn learn how to deal with anger, we learn how to respect another person, we learn how to uh, deal with conflict, and we take those patterns into the marriage that we're going to have. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, you are marrying that family. You are marrying all those patterns of, of that other mm -hmm. family, and they're bringing them in. So you get together, and they have their patterns from their family, and you have yours from yours. Right. They don't always go together. And ultimately, even if your husband or your wife is a good guy and appears to live above those patterns, they're going to come through mm -hmm. That's in right. the long <laughs> haul. Yeah. That's right. It may look good for a while, yeah, which is why I encourage people to date a for a time. longer time and go mm -hmm. through some conflicts together because then yeah. the true have colors. Have a good fight, right? Right, yeah. and go through some difficulty together, yeah. you know, and yeah. see what really comes out during that difficulty. No hitting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Or you go to the corner. Exactly. <laughs> but Linda, what happens if you're, are you, we're all in that situation. Right. I mean, I, my, I know my, my ex-husband, I really did like marry his mother, you right. know, when I started seeing that That's the duck doesn't say. fall far yeah, from the yeah. tree. Yeah. So w once you're in that situation, how do you get out of that? Or well, how do you make that person know? Or how do I know that I'm reflecting how things? How do you know that you know? Yeah, yeah. and that's a good question, but you have to identify the patterns. I just, I just got done working with a young couple who's engaged to be married. And what we did is we went through each of their families and we identified all of the patterns that they have learned and that they're bringing into the marriage. And it was so eye-opening for uh -huh. them. And you can do that after you're married. You can say, look, when you deal with, let's take conflict, for example. When you deal with conflict, you might avoid, and I might want to fight right then. Those yeah. two patterns don't go real well hmm. together. Yeah. So what if I had a mother who, 
who would like to fight, but my father was very passive. So which one did you take on, and where do you fall passive. in that? And the passive. passive so yeah. then you have to look at that, and if you marry a fighter, that's going to create problems. Oh. So half okay. of it's identifying. It's identifying, yeah. them, identifying them, and then you can work on changing yeah. them. All right. Wow. There are a lot more myths to talk mm -hmm. about. Dr. Linda's book is called I Married You, Not Your Family, and Nine Other Myths That Can Ruin Your Marriage. And you can find it at livingthelife.com. And be sure to register on our website for a chance to win a free copy. Yeah. That's always cool. Mm -hmm. And we'll hear more from Dr. Linda when we come back. So don't go away.